Hey Brad. I hope the camera's working. I'm not quite sure. The lights aren't working right, but I think it's working. Um, this is a response to your uh, 100 subscriber. Yay! I've been terrible at uh, doing subscriber or uh, contests lately, so congratulations on 100 subscribers. Um, as everyone says, you'll be at 1 million before you know it, I'm sure. So, um, <laughs> uh, um, get right to it. Um, so this is all about closing songs on albums, and I've got five albums. Um, there are probably some more that I could uh, bring up, but um, it's the only ones that really came to mind right off the top of my head and looking through all my vinyl and whatnot. I, I've got some other things on CD that I don't have on vinyl that um, I think would would also be a good addition to it, but I don't want to hold up CDs, I don't want to hold up vinyl. Um, so, <laughs> somebody's going to be a little predictable, you know, uh, and, you know, the first one, uh, of course, is, and it's this one, Tomorrow Never Knows, from Revolver. Yeah, I had to do it, Beatles. Yeah, I had to do Beatles. And this is a nice uh, UK pressing two-box EMI from the 70s uh, issue and um, even though it was the first song recorded for the uh, on the album sessions called I always forget what it's called and I get corrected on it uh, mark 5 or mark 1 or something like that you know, that was the name of the song eventually it became tomorrow never knows and it was it, it took I think two or three recording sessions for the album for the song over a period of time during the sessions to finally finish it up but it was the first song recorded for the album, and yet it's the last song on the on the album. It's the closer, um, and I'd be curious to know if that's because it was just too strange and they wanted to put it at the end or just what. But it ends up it was the best place for it because it is a nice a nice tie in to uh, to what was to come next, which was Sgt. Pepper. Um, so everybody knows this guy. I'll move on, but you know, there's a couple other Beatles albums I could choose as well. Good grief, Abbey Road's last song, and Sgt. Pepper, and a number of others. Uh, in the same vein or similar vein, but a little bit later on in music history, XTC Skylarking, um, Sacrificial Bonfire being the last song on this album. Uh, it's just a nice, nice song to tie up all the songs that that uh, you hear on the album. Um, it was sort of a concept album. I always hate when you say concept album and then it's, well, you know, it is, it isn't. The artist intended it to be. The artist didn't intend it to be. Who knows? Um, I think the idea was with Todd Rundgren was to have a, um, a nice coherent album here. And, and uh, that's what they did. And Sacrificial Bonfire was just this great, uh, nice you know, end of summer kind of song. In fact, I might put this album on, or at least that one song on today. Uh, end of end of summer. Since today is the uh, first day of fall, we have crossed the line, and we're now out of summer and into fall, which means I can't wear my summer clothes anymore. Darn it. Uh, but Sacrificial Bonfire, um, just everything from the production on it, the musical instruments, the, the, the lyrics, they're all really great. And XTC um, has similar songs finishing up albums as well, but um, never anything is good that works with the rest of the album and kind of sums up the album as this one does. So that's number two for me. Um, number three, we're going to head back to the 60s with uh, the Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, and specifically the last song on it, um, which is Caroline No. But the best thing about... Caroline Know, uh, was, the song itself is really great, and it's kind of a sad kind of, you know, the album starts off as a song about two people getting together, wouldn't it be nice, and uh, all this optimism, and then you get Caroline Know at the end, which is just the opposite, it's like, well, it's sort of fizzled out, it didn't happen, it, it happened and then it didn't work out, it all depends on what you, how you want to look at it and listen to it as, but... Um, it bookends the album from front to back quite well, but Caroline O is very good. 
the best thing about Caroline No, though, is the end of Caroline No, where you have um, you have the sound of uh, a dog off in the distance barking to a train, blowing its whistle off in the distance as it's traveling away from you. More of, uh, I'm assuming, uh, Brian Wilson's favorite sounds. Sounds of a dog, sounds of a train whistle. That's what I love about that song. That's what I love about the end of the song is that I, I too, I just I love the sound of a train. And the train horn, the train whistle, whatever you, you get. Uh, that sound to me is just stops me in my tracks mentally and just puts me in the mood of traveling and, and going somewhere and just, you know, has an effect on me. So the hearing that at the end of this album, at the end of that song, is also um, kind of stops me in my tracks in, in a way. And um, it, it, it's, it's a really good end to, to the song, let alone the end of the album. So. Sounds. Uh, next one, a little bit of a jump, but it is um, Marvin Gaye's album, Hear My Dear. And a lot of people know the story behind this album. This had to do with, I won't go into the details of it, but basically, this was uh, an agreement to do with a divorce where Marvin Gaye's wife at the time said, or whatever the, whatever the, uh, uh, agreement was in the divorce proceedings she would get the proceeds from his next album and so he proceeded to write an album about uh, their relationship sort of as to okay you're gonna if you want the proceeds from the next album it's gonna be about us and about how everything happened and why we're at this point and the last song being um, well it's a song that's it's reprised over the album and um, it's uh it's a reprise of when did I stop when did you stop loving me when did I stop loving you and but it's the reprise of it it happens earlier on in the album um, in fact it's the um, third song I believe yeah it's the third song on, on side one it's a two record set but then it's reprised at the end and it just it sort of sums it all up again it's kind of nice that it comes up uh, this is just a great album I hope there's not too much reflection or blare so I'm trying to hold it at different angles so but anyway, uh, favorite Marvin Gay album of mine, I really like. But uh, the whole thing to listen to is just really interesting. Even the artwork is interesting. And I'll take it out for those who have not seen this or are not familiar with it. Um, just that whole scene there, that love and marriage here written, and then over here it's, what is it, pain and divorce inscribed in these, you know, marble stones and of course Marvin on the front right here and then the inside is nice it has be Marvin handing off a record to an outstretched hand you know here you go here my dear so interesting interesting album interesting production the song uh, I've got to refer to it because I always say it wrong if I just say it off the top of my head. But the song, When Did You Stop Loving Me? When Did I Stop Loving You? In this case, the reprise of the song at the end. The great way to end this album. Um, so that's number four. And I just have five. Hooray, so this will be a short clip. Yay. So I always go like into 20 minutes or so. But this is an album I, ever since you announced your, ever since you, uh, um, you had your clip about this uh, contest. This was the first song that this was the first song, the first album that popped into my mind of, of probably favorite endings to an album. Um, and it's one that I was listening to just this morning and posted about uh, on Facebook. So, uh, and that is the song "By" by Elliot Smith on his Figure Eight album. And um, yeah, I love this album. I also love the album that came before it, XO, and the album before that, which uh, has finally been reissued on vinyl, um, but I can't remember the name of it. It's terrible of me, but yes, the song By, B-Y-E. If you've ever heard that song, if you haven't heard the song, it is, it is one of the eeriest songs you'll ever hear. It is basically the sound of a lone piano being played, just this nice little tune, almost a little kind of a jaunty little tune but it's just so lonely and just so sad and the way it sounds there's an echo to it it's as though the piano is on one end of the uh, studio 
one end of the room and the microphone is on the other end of the room so there's a lot of distance and there's a lot of space between it and you just hear this piano being played and this tune on this piano being played there's no lyrics it's just the music it's just the it's just the tune and it's called bye as in goodbye so um it's a bit on the eerie side it's a bit on the creepy side to hear that but in context with the whole album I mean, listening to the music kind of songs going back and forth being a bit melancholy a bit sad depressing and then being a bit more up-tempo rock uh, this whole album is great you know we're talking about tens to me this is a I don't know if I brought this out on the tens uh, contest that was out but this is a 10 for me as is XO I kind of think of XO and um, uh, figure eight I always want to call it some sand because that's the first song on here uh, XO and Figure Eight as being kind of a double album, even though you know, the reissue of this is a double album. But um, I kind of think of those two albums going really well together. And we're talking about it. And, and Brett, you posted a photograph of yourself standing in front of this wall. I remember, uh, like I said, on um, you know, taking a short post and I'm making it long. I didn't think of that. <laughs> I remember driving by a number of years ago. I was down in LA with a fr with a friend. He was driving me through LA and. He drove by, and I just, he didn't even point it out. I just noticed off to the left, I said, that's thats the wall that Elliot Smith had photographed, uh, had the photograph for his album, Figure Eight. And he's a F Elliot Smith fan as well. He said, yeah. I said, was it a record store? He goes, no, it's more like a stereo store, music store, you know, instruments and things like that. I don't remember the graffiti on it that you, that, that was on it when you uh, had your picture taken in 2005, I think you said. I was there probably 2009, so it must have been painted over. I'm not sure, um, but it's. You know, I'm glad it's still there. Uh, I didn't go and pay homage to Elliot Smith or anything like that, but um, I'm glad that it's still there and that painting is still there. What's odd, and I'll probably put this on um, Facebook. Um, I was sort of flipping through. Um, Google looking up album covers for one thing or another and um, I was looking up something to do with small faces and I found a Dutch 45 cover from the 60s and it had a design on it that had the whole 45 sleeve. It was very similar to this design you see here, this, this kind of shape, the swirl, the multiple lines that come in. I'll post it on Facebook and you can kind of, maybe I'll try to post both together side by side. You can, I have a feeling that was somewhat the inspiration for this uh, wall art that was on the, that's on the outside of that uh, music store. And um, uh, I wish I could take the time to put it up as part of this post, but I just, I just, I, I just don't have the time right now to do the, uh, the video net editing that needs to be done on that. So anyway so these are my five with this one being probably ah, <laughs> attacked by the record uh, that'll be fun to watch back the expression on my face uh, I just don't want this thing clanging into my head or my eye anyway um, yeah this is a 10 the way this album ends is a 10 and uh, that song by is definitely a 10 so. good contest Brett, congratulations, uh, enjoying all your posts, and look forward to many, 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 many more, and um, that's that. I just got in under the wire once again. I procrastinate. It's like, it's like homework sometimes, uh, doing this. I don't know why, but it is. I go, I got to think of the records, and I got to do this, and I got to upload it. I, you know, I, I, I take part in some of these... Uh, in some of the contests I don't in others because I procrastinate way too long or I don't have answers for them really sometimes I just don't know. really don't have a good answer for this I'm not gonna try to make one up um, but I just crossed over 300 subscribers and I'm thinking should I have a contest and I'm thinking well what would the questions be and what would I give away and then that becomes more work and I can't think of what I would do but uh, yeah, if I'm going to take part in, in people's contests, I should at least have one myself. So I just crossed over 300, and maybe I'll do a contest. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, it's all about you right now, Brett. Three, uh, 100. You'll be a 300 pretty soon, I'm sure. Um, and uh, take care.
thanks for the good questions and interesting uh, responses that you've been getting. I've been enjoying them. So.